Join us in the family sukkah, or booth, in this Roots and Reflections, celebrating one of the three great Jewish festivals of ascent going up to Jerusalem. The book of Leviticus says, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days to the Lord. Why do we do this? Former Israel Ashkenazi chief rabbi Shlomo Gorn gave the reason outside his own sukkah a short time before his death. This is one of the commandments of the Bible uh, that we are committed to eat seven days in the sukkah, not only to eat, to sleep and to dwell seven days in the sukkah in order to remember the history of the Jewish people after they left Egypt. They lived 40 years in Sukkot, in the desert. The Torah command is clear. You shall take for yourselves on the first day the fruit of beautiful trees or citrus trees, branches of palm trees, the boughs of leafy trees, and willows of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. You shall dwell in booths for seven days. I can't believe it. Bamboo branches up a stairwell. We're going to have to come back with a truck for this, though. Good stash. Just kidding, of course. We'll have to get our own sukkah roofing. As the Mishnah says, stolen branches are not valid. Immediately after the fast of Yom Kippur, that night, people finished their meal, breaking the fast of Yom Kippur. And the moment that the food starts going down, the first thing they do is they take a hammer and they start, you know, hammering the sukkah together and putting it together. And uh, the whole of Jerusalem is like clacking of hammers and everyone's putting together the sukkah. At the conclusion of Yom Kippur, residents begin to build their sukkah. And this is the makings of the beginning of one before it has been decorated. Four walls, open roof, and an escape hatch just in case for the dog and cat. The Jewish people coming out of Egypt and uh, wandering in the desert for 40 years. So the Sukkot is reminiscent of the tabernacles that were in the wilderness. So you have first a creative meeting and then you have a historical meeting, which primarily is to remind us of what happened to the children of Israel there. The Mishnah describes meticulously what makes a sukkah acceptable or unacceptable. For example, if a sukkah is more than 20 cubits high, it is not valid. But a sukkah can be built on the top of a wagon or on the deck of a ship if necessary during long distance travel. If one builds it on the back of a camel, it is valid. But none may go up into it on a festival day. That makes sense. I have an official camel license, and I can verify it would be very difficult to celebrate Sukkot on a camel's back. Once the sukkah is built, decorating the temporary structure is a priority. I think I'm gonna buy a few decorations. Kamakola <laughs> Hab. <laughs> no deals here, but they are pretty. Okay, we got our decorations. Chag Sameach. A lot of action down here in Mea Sharim, but the best thing happening is celebrating Sukkot. And I think this is a little bit sparse. We need to add a few more items to our sukkah. Look at the size of this pineapple. Oh my. How much is that? The Maima Ananas. Some beautiful decorations, but there's a limit and it's also depending on how big the sukkah is itself. Shana Tova. 
שנה טובה וחג שמח. I've said it before, never send a husband to buy. We just don't stop shopping. Roots and Reflections is a program created to bring you the Bible, culture, and education from Israel. It is our desire to build you up in your faith, to bring you hope both now and in the future, and to share God's love with all of you. Call the number on your screen and partner with us as we seek to share the good news from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth. When you sit in the sukkah, you are not supposed to have decorations above you, but only the wood or the thatched type covering so that you can see the stars. Before we go any further on Roots and Reflections, it's time for our Word of the Week. You've already heard it, but in Israel at this time of the year, you just have to know the phrase Chag Sameach. What does Chag Sameach mean well, to you? Well, I think, I think there are two things this week, I mean, that we still say. Shana Tova, uh, have a wonderful year and a blessed year, and Chag Sameach uh, means have, have, a, have a very blessed, not just holiday, have a very blessed celebration of the presence and the glory of God. Chag Sameach, Barry. Chag Sameach. Chag Sameach. <laughs> Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Toda. Let's get back to our sukkah. Various rabbis can give contradictory instructions. Rabbi Eliezer said, a man is bound to eat 14 meals in the sukkah, one each day and one each night. But the sages say there is no prescribed number save that he must eat in the sukkah on the night of the first festival day of the feast. The Torah says you shall dwell in booths, but few actually camp out in the sukkah. Sukkot is like a big time picnic time. In other words, you're eating in the sukkah, you're supposed to be sleeping in the sukkah. A lot of people chicken out though when it gets rainy or when it, if, by the way, when it starts raining and getting really bad, you're allowed to go into the house. Uh, I heard from some rabbis, when the mosquitoes get too bad, they go into the house also. Uh, so under optimum conditions, you should be also sleeping in the sukkah. Peter, uh, Shimon K from the New Covenant also speaks of us, as well as Shaul, Paul the Apostle, speaks of our life in this body as being a tabernacle. What, what, what do they mean by that? A tabernacle is seen as a temporary residence, as opposed to a house being a permanent residence. And it's a reminder that our body as being our home in this lifetime is a, is a temporary residence and not, not our permanent residence. And that, of course, makes you think about God, makes you think about what happens after, after, after this life. The Torah sets tabernacles in an agricultural framework. On the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep the feast of the Lord for seven days. It's a celebration time, Sukkot. It's a good time to buy dried fruits and especially dates. And these look really, really good. Let's go on a date. Maybe some apricots. Hug some air to that. Fruits, nuts, the works. The word harvest in Hebrew and the word summer in Hebrew and the word end times in Hebrew all have a similar root. And, and, and several times, in fact, Yeshua said, the end times is the harvest. The end of the summer is the harvest. And there's a play that the end of the summer coming in at the end of the harvest season, represented by Sukkot, is also supposed to be the harvest of evangelism in the kingdom of God. And it also represents the end times. All those are in the Hebrew language, it's very clear. As we move in to the end times, this is going to be the time of the greatest harvest. It's going to be the time when hundreds of millions of people are going to turn to the Lord. 